Hello, investors. It's Von Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, October 18th, 5.20 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with the Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. Market state, we're in an uptrend. That uptrend kicked into a higher high year with a breakout on October 9th. You can see the trend gauge over here. We've got the coveted four green arrows, meaning our flagship portfolio protection is in growth mode. Market leaders acting just fine, and the major index is trending above their short-term 21-day moving average, medium-term 50-day moving average, and long-term 200-day moving average. So what happened today? First of the big tech names kicked off earnings uh, after hours Thursday. Netflix with a great report. Beat and raise up 11% on the day. That sparked a rally in large cap growth names. S&P 500 has now been up six straight weeks and closed at an all-time high. Nothing bearish there. Let's get into the numbers. The 21 over 21 list, 11 up, two neutral, eight down. Up an average of 0.67%. The big eight. Netflix clearly led the way and skewed the average to uh, up 1.8%. Without that, the others were up uh, an average of 0.47%. Still a good return. RG8 is R8 growth ETF composite. Mixed returns, small cap lagging a bit today, uh, but still up a third of a percent, led by ARK K. Uh, S&P 500 opened up three tenths of a percent. Trended up most of the day, higher highs, higher lows, little fade into the close of 0.4%, equal weight up a third of a percent. NASDAQ 100 led the way up two thirds of a percent, equal weight NASDAQ 100 up 0.42. Dow uh, up by less than a tenth of a percent, mid caps essentially flat. Russell 2000 small caps down two tenths. Uh, when oils and banks are weak on the day, you're almost always going to see the Russell uh, struggling. Global diversified 60-40 stock and bond up 0.38%. Our flagship protection portfolio up 0.41%. Let's get into the numbers. And since it is a Friday, we're going to uh, show uh, the weekly charts in the uh, upper part so you can see what the weekly return and what the lack approximately three months of uh, performance looks like for every chart that we're going to bring up. Shouldn't be a surprise to see an uptrend because, well, we're in a bull market and a rising tide lifts all boats. If you're, it also makes uh, average advisors look like rock stars. That's the market uh, outperforming. It's nothing... Uh, a passive advisor is doing. But if you're interested in protecting your downside, now's the time uh, to bring your accounts to Revere, not after you've lost 20% uh, during the next market turn. Uh, you know by our approach that we detail on video every night, uh, that's not going to happen for our clients because we'll be taken out of the market by our rules if the market turns weak. Not the case right now. Strong uptrend. You can see the S&P 500 here. We had a pullback on Tuesday. Recovered most of that Wednesday. Thursday made a higher high and reversed. Inside day today, but an all-time high close. You can see uh, up 0.85% on the week and six straight weekly closes uh, on the S&P 500 as we... And it, uh, come into the most bullish part of the year, and that includes uh, election years and less than three weeks away now, or a little over three weeks away uh, from that election. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100, outperforming today, uh, up 0.66%. I got a click box if I want that to update. So let's we'll go to the Dow and then we'll come back. Here's the Dow higher highs, up almost a percent on the week. Back to the NASDAQ 100, up 1.1% on the week, also six weeks up inside day today. Didn't surpass the highs from Monday with the harsh pullback that tech names had uh, as it was tied to the semiconductors and ASML with a brutal uh, report. But two days later or a day later, Taiwan Semiconductor with a report uh, sparked semiconductors back to the upside, but not enough for tech to overcome. 
the highs from Monday. So we'll be looking for some possible relative strength to kick that in. Normally, the NASDAQ 100 leads on the way up, leads bull markets on the way up. But that's been one of the great things about this is there's been diversification across sectors. Uh, and we break down the sectors every day on our calls, uh, intra-team calls. So uh, it's not just seven stocks bringing this market higher. And as evidence of this, here's the equal weight S&P 500 also closing at an all-time high. Let's go to the S&P 400 mid cap. Uh, basically unclosed on the day, hanging out there near all-time highs. We'll bring up the weekly just to confirm that. And we'll keep that weekly up when we show the Russell 2000 because that has not yet made a higher high. That high was made back in uh, November of 2021 after a torrid rally uh, post-COVID. Uh, but at the at the top of a nice little sideways uh, weekly base that we're forming here, primed for a breakout above that 2300 level, uh, not six weeks up here. You can see two weeks down uh, over the past six, but still up 1.9%. On the week, back to the daily charts, you can see here, double inside day on the Russell, coiling for a move higher. We'll be looking to add to our uh, Russell 2000 position, which we initiated on this break of the downtrend line. And uh, that's a really good looking consolidation there. Last but not least, here's equal weight NASDAQ 100. Uh, you can see not at all time highs that pulled back since uh, on the brutal pullback uh, from Tuesday and has not recouped that. Those are the major indexes. Inter asset correlation, we'll start with the VIX. VIX making lower lows at 18 now, down 5.4%. Uh, so pulling back this week, in fact, down 12% for the week corresponding uh, outsized loss compared to uh, what the market gained. But then again, this was a big move up on the VIX leading into uh, this week. Uh, also, the volatility of the S&P 500 has been incre uh, decreasing, even though uh, we saw increase in the VIX there. Uh, so a few mixed signals there, but we take our primary signals signals from price and volume of the major indexes and leading stocks. Let's go to the dollar. Uh, pull back in the dollar after this. I mean, this is only three days down over the last three weeks. Uh, ran into the 200-day moving average and reversed today. Uh, how did that transfer over to precious metals? Big move up here today. Breakaway gap on gold up a percent. Silver, however, bigger uh, gap and go up 6.1% and breaking out very nicely after a handle was put in to complement this uh, flat base that was 94 days long and gold stocks kicking in as well with a big move up 4% on the day. How about Bitcoin? Well, it's made a higher high. We talked about uh, everybody watching for higher highs here for so we finally got one the next level to overcome is this 3947 and then the 40 level that corresponds with the 70,000 ish uh on uh spot bitcoin itself but uh making higher highs showing relative strength uh broke the downtrend line and making higher highs as i said up 8.7% uh on the week on bonds Broad bond index BND, kind of tight today, just barely positive. TLT, the long bond, just barely positive. Yields, the 30-year, uh, just barely down, and 10-year uh, down as well. That's our inter-asset correlation. Let's get to the tail of the tape, and then we'll wrap it up with the 21 over 21 to see how they did this week. Uh, so... Um, the major news on the day is, again, Netflix sparking that rally. Uh, one of the big names reports next week, and then the week after that is when they really kick into the into gear. Uh, today's keys, we're looking to maintain that breakout support. No problem there, making a higher high. NASDAQ 100, with the weakness on Tuesday, we still wanted to see it hold that 490 level, and it did. And the percent of stocks above the five day, we don't want this to get too extended, and it is not. It's uh, in, in the 60 percentage uh, level, which is uh, basically considered neutral, nothing to be overly concerned about. As far as the day count, 
up five out of the last eight since the 10-9 breakout. Nine days above the eight-day moving average, 28 days above the 21-day moving average on the S&P 500. We maintain positive expectations as long as we're trending above the 21 on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Good to see small caps adding into that uh, strength as well. O- 05 equals low. Anytime you put in the low of the day on uh, the five-minute bar, you get a green light to pursue. Uh, it just means that the bulls are in control. You get a green light to pursue individual names and possibly the indexes. That 05 equals low kicked into a five-hour higher, high, higher, low trend up before that mild fade into the close. Uh, sectors that were strong on the day, uh, 10 out of the 11 spider sectors up, only XLE negative along with oils. XLF basically flat, though, so maybe you can say 9 out of 11 up. The big moves up were uh, gold, silver, and gold and silver stocks and uranium. Bonds kind of neutral, just barely moving the downside, the dollar, oils, banks, and retail. And speaking of adding strong names, we bought COHR on a downgrade pullback, uh, bounced off the 21 pre-market, and then kind of went sideways uh, while it was down three over 3% on the day, but a chance to sneak into a leader with a good risk reward. We'll look at the chart momentarily. We also added to CEG. We're eyeing this uh, on Wednesday. We got a pullback over the last two days to be able to add to our current position. That moves our adjusted beta from 1.61 up to 1.76. Bottom line on the day, Netflix earnings sparks a large cap growth rally. Six weeks up for the S&P 500 and the all-time high close. That's not bearish, folks. Worst animal, the most dangerous animal on the planet is the perma bear. They will uh, claw your portfolio if you listen to uh, the fear mongers. We're going to stick with the same keys for Monday, breakout support uh, from 10.9. Just want to make sure we don't pierce that. Uh, same level on the NASDAQ 100, that's 490, and we'll keep an eye on that stocks above the five-day moving average. Also want to make sure we don't get too far extended above the 21 and the 50-day moving averages on the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. All right, let's get into charts now, and we're going to go with the 21 over 21 list, and we're going to go in order of strongest on the day to weakest on the day. Let's see if any end up dropping off uh, of the, where's my weekly chart? Lost my weekly chart. Let's see if any of them end up uh, dropping off uh, of the 2121 list due to closing the week below the 21 over 21. So MicroStrategy led the way today uh, after a four-day pullback, undercut and reclaim of the eight yesterday, bouncing off the eight up 11.6% today. Uh, on 82% above average volume, great looking chart breaking back above that 200 pivot level, uh, up 1.54% on the week. Shark Ninja undercut the 21 earlier in the week, but strong close uh, to the week back above the 21, giving it a stay of execution. Palantir had a chance to sneak into uh, this on Wednesday, didn't take it back above the 8 EMA down for the week, however. IOT, uh, five days down, working its way back into the plus column today. Sparrow Labs bounced off the eight a couple days ago, challenging for recent highs after this big move up on a new product announcement. Axon continues to just work its way higher. NVIDIA, tight range today, tightest I remember in a while, up 2.4% on the week, right, right, right. near uh, its all-time highs. Kava. Uh, three tight days sideways, continuing to work its way higher. Freeport McNamaran, <laughs> McMoran, uh, basically right on the 21. When keep an eye on this declining tops trend line that this has put in here. This initially uh, spiked on the China euphoria. Um, it's settling down a little bit. SCCO might be a, a better um, option. We're looking at them both, but for now, uh, FCX will stay on the list pending our weekend review. Note three weeks down after three big weeks up. So it's a normal consolidation after that big move higher. F5 hanging right on the 21 day as well after a close below on Wednesday. A uh, little bit of strength back over the last couple of days. Relative strength line flagging though. You don't, even if it's above the 21, 
if something is really screaming at us to be added to the list and something on the list is lagging from a relative basis, we may replace it. Cart uh, bounced near the 21 on Wednesday to up days still down on the week. That's the case with a lot of uh, these leaders that they consolidated this week um, after being really extended coming into the week. GWRE just continues to march higher after its earnings report. Uh, SE down on the week, uh, consolidating right near that 100 Livermore level. Exxon Mobil, this is, I believe, below the 21 or close to right on it. Let's see. It is uh, one-tenth below uh, the 21 day. We'll see if we keep it on there or not. Probably not. There's maybe a, a more a stronger oil stock. Very similar to FCX uh, in the fact that it's a commodity, A. And B, it's got that very similar downtrend uh, line here. Probably need to work some uranium into this as that's been extremely hot, led by CCJ. That'll probably end up on the list next week. And um, we got more. Let's see. Yes, we do have more. We got Seagate uh, with a negative, two negative reversals this week. It has earnings next week right near this pivot of the cup and handle. Um, CEG looks like we went backwards here. Let's see what happened. Okay. All right. There's Exxon. Then STX, that's uh, Seagate, then CEG, negative reversal, closing right on the 8, added to that today. Uh, Oracle, hanging uh, really sideways for about the last week and a half. Strong AI stock. Sprouts, pull back to the 8. Uber. Uh, now, Uber had some news about possibly uh, buying another company this week. Uh, it's one of the travel companies. That doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, regardless, disappointing five days down after this big volume move higher after the uh, Tesla uh, didn't present a an alternative to Uber. There was some thought that they were going to when they did their uh, event last week. Uh, don't like to see this giving up as much as it has, but it's still above the 21, still above that 78.45 pivot. VRT with a pullback, we're still riding nicely above the eight. And finally, Coherent got into this one today on the downgrade. Was above average volume. Uh, leaders get bought up on downgrades if they're going to continue to be a leader. So we're looking for this to regain that 100 level next week, our stop just below the 21 day. And that'll wrap it. As always, like to hear from you, the email is DonnaRiveraAsset.com. The phone's 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. My partner, Dan Stewart, can be reached at dan at riveraasset.com if you're interested in becoming a client. As always, uh, remember, our flagship portfolio is named Grotection because it is designed with a set of rules to grow assets during uptrends. Things start to pull back. We start to lighten up. Things get really ugly we get the heck out of the way like the 2022 bear market. The key line for us is this black line. That's the 40-week or 200-day moving average. Uh, you break below there. This is when you're at risk for big losses. This is where all bear markets occur. As long as you're above this black line, for the most part, uh, nothing to fear but fear itself. And that would that means like a normal 8 to 10% pullback. Uh, and if you stop at the 21 uh, or 200 day, great. If you break below it, uh, the scenario can certainly change. And with that, I'll wrap it for the week ending October 18th. As my dog in the background says, hello, this is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend.